Hi everybody and thank you for joining me in this new video presentation. Today I would like to present you a patient with single ventricle tricuspid atresia and extra cardiac conduit fontan surgery. She suffers from atrial tachycardia. Besides from case presentation, I would like to discuss with you the multiple possibilities that we have to access the pulmonary venous atrium in extracardiac fountain surgery. I hope you will enjoy this video and join me in my future video presentations. Thank you. The most surgical technique utilized in the modern era is now extracardiac conduit fountain operation, with one of the major perceived benefits being a lower risk for atrial arrhythmias. Unfortunately, supraventricular arrhythmias still develop after the extracardiac conduit fontan operation and together with the inherent challenges in obtaining access to the pulmonary venous atrium can pose significant difficulties for catheter ablation. Our patient is a 53-year-old woman with single ventricle and tricuspid atresia who had extracardiac fontan surgery many years ago and developed symptomatic atrial tachycardia, refractory to medical therapy, and was admitted for catheter ablation. The baseline ECG of the patient shows an atrial tachycardia with a cycle length of 500 milliseconds. The first step for planning such a procedure is imaging. As you can see here in the CT scan, we can assess the anatomical correlation of extracardiac conduit with pulmonary venous atrium, and therefore we can plan for the type of puncture that we can use to access the pulmonary venous atrium to ablate the atrial tachycardia. The next step would be the three-dimensional reconstruction of the anatomy so we can better assess the correlation between extracardiac conduit and pulmonary venous anatomy and plan for the puncture. So based on the information from 3D reconstruction, we can decide to go for transconduit puncture or transcaval puncture as we will see later. Based on the imaging information, we didn't find a significant overlap between inferior vena cava and systemic venous atrium. Therefore, we decided to go for transconduit puncture, as you can see here, under the guide of transesophageal echocardiography. The coherent mapping revealed a mucor reentrant atrial tachycardia using the cover tricuspid isthmus actually on the right side, the atretic tricuspid valve, and on the left side, the occluded inferior vena cava and atriotomy scar, the two borders of the arrhythmia circuit. Catheter ablation at the same location terminated the atrial tachycardia, and during the rest of the procedure, no further atrial tachycardias were inducible. The final ECG shows a stable sinus rhythm. Now let's look together at an interesting study recently published in Heart Rhythm on 10-year outcome of transcaval and also transconduit puncture in patients with extracardiac conduit fontan surgery. This is an interesting single center study between June 2009 and November 2019. 23 EPS studies requiring pulmonary venous atrium access were performed in 17 extracardiac conduit fontan patients. Cavoatrial overlap was identified in 14 patients by preprocedural imaging, and it's interesting that pulmonary venous atrium access was obtained via transcaval puncture in 11 patients, and direct conduit puncture was only necessary in 6 patients. This is one of their patients, two-dimensional CT angio view and three-dimensional volume rendered CT angiogram were used for preprocedural planning in a 25-year-old patient who had undergone extracardiac fountain surgery at the age of 7 years. The inferior vena cava is seen adjacent to the pulmonary venous atrium with a region of cavoatrial overlap measuring 40 mm. So in this patient, transconduit puncture was not necessary and they used transcaval puncture to assess the pulmonary venous atrium. Once again, thank you for joining me in this video presentation. I hope to having your feedbacks here and I invite you to join me in my future video presentations.